Welcome back to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast, brought to you as always by the Hockey Podcast Network. Horwat, cue the New Year's music. It's time to pop some champagne and ring in 2022 and hope that it is not as bad as 21 or 2020. So hopefully it's a better year next year. And we have New Year's resolutions, hockey New Year's resolutions, I might add, but New Year's resolutions nonetheless to lay out here in this segment. Yeah, I mean, we all have our own New Year's resolutions, whether they are hockey-related or not. Mm -hmm. Um, But it should be fun. And cue the New Year's music. What is that? I can only think of two songs. It's Imagine by John Lennon, because I think that's the last song they play every year at Mm -hmm. the ball drop in New York. And that's yeah, Frank Sinatra's New York, New York, because that's the first song they play after after the ball drop. So Yeah, I was thinking of uh, the second one, John Lennon one. Ah, the John Lennon. That also makes sense. All well, the second of it, one that gets played, not the second one you mentioned. Yeah. Oh, is it the other way around? I forget which way it is, but regardless. Yeah, regardless. Uh, we're not yeah, actually cueing any music, so I don't know why we're arguing. <laughs> yeah. This, <laughs> wow, we're off to a hot start. Let's talk yeah. New Year's resolutions. All righty. Uh, my first New Year's resolution is for the entirety of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and it's pretty apropos. And it seems like uh, we say it every year, man, it never happens. Basically, it's a New Year's resolution. We say that we need to do it, and it never does happen. And that is stay healthy. Whether Mm -hmm. that be stay away from COVID, the sniffles uh, that everybody else has, like Lafferty and and Gensel, stay away from the the common cold, I guess. And also, just don't get injured because, uh, you know, eventually it'd be nice to see this team at full health. I know that's almost basically a fallacy and a farce at this point that that doesn't exist, a fully healthy Penguins roster. But, uh It'd be nice to see. So New Year's resolution number one for the entire team and organization, just stay healthy. Yeah, I, you took one of mine as well because that's just an easy one. That's it's one that we use every year for the Penguins. It's mm-hmm. stay healthy, don't get hurt. Uh, this is a, this is also a resolution that can go for uh, everyone in, in this era of the world we're living in and just stay healthy out there. It's, it's important. And Oh man, yeah. Stay healthy, stay off, stay out of the ER, stay out of the COVID list, all that shit. For the Penguins, especially. We we've had games getting postponed because of this nonsense, okay? We have no lineup. Yeah, four straight. Yeah. What's so, next? I mean, the, the Penguins have won seven straight, and I, I meant to mention this in the last segment. I said a couple weeks ago, I said, hey, maybe, you know, looking at the schedule, the Penguins. They might finish out the 2021 calendar year without losing a game. They only played one game between that then, and they were supposed to play five. So I'll still take the credit for it, but it, it feels a little off. Hey, it one for it's not like they went over. Oh, they went one for one. That's bat in a thousand. Yeah, fair enough. Did it. Way to go. Fair enough. Horowat, what is your uh, first? I guess I stole one of yours. So technically, your second New Year's resolution. Oh well. This one is uh, more for me because I feel like I didn't do a lot of it this year, and that is watch more hockey around the league. <laughs> yes. Because you always, you always bring up league stuff now, and I'm like, yeah, that's a thing that's happening. I used to be all over le- hot, hot, uh, league stuff. Mm-hmm. used to be all over the one telling you, hey, here's what's happening in, I don't know, Dallas. Vancouver. Vancouver. Oh, everyone knows what's going on in Vancouver right now, okay? Yeah, that's fair. It's a, it's a <laughs> top story in the NHL, basically. Yeah, but nowadays it's you, know, you telling me, and I appreciate it. It's awesome, but I need to get myself back into watching more league hockey, watching more league stuff. I mean, Connor McDavid is a thing, and I need to start openly admitting it that he's a thing. Uh, but also, his team sucks again, so it's fun. Yeah, I just need to start watching more league stuff again. I got to utilize my ESPN Plus account. That's what I really have to do. Mm-hmm. I have it. Use it. Yeah, I think it's because just... I'm not a big fan of my main TV, but still. Hey, go out there, throw up the quad screen whenever there's actually four games in a day, which hasn't happened in a while. But throw up the quad screen, watch four games at a time. I love it. I love I it. Did, I did use the double screen when Pitt was playing for the ACC championship and Pitt women's volleyball was playing Penn State. So I did oh, do you, that for a couple minutes. You a big women's volleyball fan? No, but whenever uh, a local team is playing against Penn State and it's a uh, big deal because they were on their way to the final four yeah uh, yeah I'll, I'll catch a couple minutes of that <laughs> okay i didn't know if you harken back and you just had flashbacks and need to scratch the itch of the point park intramural oh, volleyball club forgot all about that oh yeah oh yeah you know call it we're college athletes or what <laughs> shut the hell up we are uh former college athletes i won't say that we're no longer in college but yeah uh, we were college athletes intramural volleyball never had a match but we practiced a good two weeks 
So, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I, that's what I, I didn't know if that's why you, uh, you, you tried to stay connected to the sport. No, just anytime Pitt Penn State plays, it's fun. Doesn't matter the sport. Yeah. Uh, and Pitt volleyball is like the best team they've ever had. So, you gotta there say you, you saw something, right? Oh, there you have it. There you have it. Uh, my second one, second New Year's resolution. And this one is a, a little bit off the wall, but I think they need to trust, trust the young guns. And by they, I mean Mike Sullivan, Ron Hextall. I know they haven't had great numbers in the AHL, but there's three guys that in this calendar year, it doesn't have to be this season, but in this calendar year, I'd like to see all three of them play at least a handful of games in the National Hockey League. First and foremost, Valtteri Pustinen, who has been one of the better players on the wilkes barre Grand Penguins in 23 games. He has seven goals and 16 points. I think he has a chance to come up here towards the end of the season to see if he works with this current team, if he can give a boost. Because if you look at all the Penguins, Stanley Cup teams, they get that kind of boost from a guy coming up, especially in 2016. You got like six of them. So maybe yeah. give Valtteri Pustin a shot this year. But next year, next season, but in the 2022 year, I'd like to see Sam Poole and Nathan Legere. It's It's been a long time, and I understand they're still marinating. This is their first year playing professional hockey. But at some point, they got to move, move on. And you got you to gotta know what you have there. And they haven't played well this year for Wilkes-Barre, so maybe not this season, but next season you really need to push and hope that they have a good offseason to be able to be in that next call-up spot because they haven't been so far. But I think it's time to trust the young guns, say, you know what, these guys have the raw talent. I think we need to give them a little bit of a shot here. Like I said, maybe not anytime soon, but at some point in 2022, I want to see at least two of those three guys make a little bit of a difference or at least play a couple games in the national. We got them. They're in the organization for a reason, right? Let's use them. Yeah. There's that's just how it goes. We it's not like they're filler down there. Mm -hmm. They're guys you want to utilize and you know hope they're productive and are part of the future. Well, that's what we expect. Uh, so why not see the beginnings of that? Exactly. What do I have as another penguins resolution? Do I have any more penguins resolutions? Not I really have two more. Go ahead and bring one up. Go ahead. I'm going to look for one because most of mine are just about myself. So I'm going to let okay, you go yeah. find one. I'll find a team one real quick. That's fair. I have, I have one for the Pittsburgh Penguins that I would imagine every listener here. I, and let me know if you don't. And if you don't, I don't know why you're a Penguins fan. But every Penguins fan and or listener that we have is going to echo this sentiment. Hey, hey, Penguins, how about you win a playoff round this year? How about we turn <laughs> the clock, win a pay playoff round, turn it back to 2018? The last time they actually got out of the first round in a four to two series win over the Flyers. Let, let's get to the second round here. It's starting to feel like Ovi not being able to get past a certain round. But of course, Ovi did it for 14 years. Penguins only three. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, and that's that is going to be my uh, second uh, Penguins resolution here for the Pens fans. Let's just remain calm. Let's. Oh, well, yeah. Every time we lose a regular season game, it's not the end of the world. Every time we lose a bad game in the regular season, it's not the end of the world. Let's just all remain calm. Unless, like you're saying, we do lose in the first round again. Then, yeah, let's hear it, but also try and be sane about it and not immediately call for heads on pikes. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing to remain calm about this offseason is the kind of moves that might get made. It, you, we went over okay. it last episode. The moves that Hextall and Burke have made so far have gotten good reviews from us. Mm -hmm. Now, that trend could change, but for now... Things have looked good for, for those two. Let's wow. say it's going to be a strange offseason with so many contracts being up. Mm -hmm. Let's not overreact this offseason. Let's see how things play out on the ice before we start bashing the decisions being made. Now, two things that I will say to, will deserve immediate backlash is if we uh, lose Crystal Tang or Kenny Malkin. Mm-hmm. Those can deserve immediate backlash. Everything else, on the other hand, let's remain calm and just see how it all plays out. Mm -hmm. So it's for everyone on Twitter just to sit back, relax, have a beer, calm down. Let's, let's not get our blood pressure up, okay? <laughs> Trying to keep everyone healthy, remember? Yeah. All my resolutions are coming together. It's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, just go with the flow. Enjoy the yeah. peaks and valleys of the NHL season. Things I have one... could always be worse. That's true. That's true. And at the end of the day, it is still a sport. You know, it's not the whole world, even though sometimes it does feel like that. And I, I won't say that I don't 
feel the same way because I do. Right. Uh, Horwat, do you have any more? I have one more left. I have one more. It's going to harken back to me. I just want to write more, man. I mm. feel like 2021 was a slow year for my writing. I try and write as much hockey as I can. So just a quick final resolution for me, hockey wise, just to write more, man. Get get behind this damn laptop. Get some words on paper and write more. I, obviously, I write for the fan damn near every day, but that's because it's my job. Uh, but I mean, the big long stories for the hockey writer. So hopefully, I'm able to get to do that more this year. Yeah, I would also like to write, but man, yeah, I, I I never do. You at least do it a little bit more. Obviously, it's your job, so that helps a lot. I mean, I'm not going to do a, a resolution of producing more content because between my actual job at Odyssey and the podcast, I, I think I'm good on that, but I, I'd like to write more. I don't know if that's in the cards, so I'm not going to hold myself to a standard I do not believe I can keep. You run two pods. You're good. Your content's getting pumped <laughs> out all the time. You got, nothing, you, know, you got nothing to worry about. Speaking of hockey and personal resolutions, this is my personal resolution hockey-wise for the year. I need to watch more women's hockey. I always say I'm going to do it, and I have watched a lot more this past year than I did ever before, but I still feel like it's not enough. I mean, it would go a long way if the IHF wouldn't just you know cancel women's tournaments like they don't matter, like they did with the women's U18 tournament even if they're currently putting on the men's U20 tournament at the exact time that they canceled it, uh, that would go a long way. But also there, there's other outlets as well. The Premier Hockey Federation is on ESPN+. Plus, So if you're looking yep. for an outlet and you already use ESPN+, Plus for the National Hockey League, go on and watch some women's hockey. They have, obviously, a league of, I believe, there's six or seven teams. I believe it's six as of right now. But the Toronto Six are having a great season. They lead the league, and actually they have a pretty good lead on second place there. I don't know if you remember Horwap, but we staked our claim last year after the after the draft with the Buffalo, the Buffalo Buttes. It's hard to say. The Buffalo Buttes. Uh, unfortunately, they're, they're dead last. You know, there, there are only only five games played, one, four, and oh. Of course, COVID is issues there as well. Yeah. But hey, if you look at the RMU alums, Emily Harley has two goals in five games. Angelica Diffendahl, two goals and four points in five games. So obviously we'll keep an eye on, on our Buffalo Buttes and hopefully they turn this thing around, get to the playoffs and shock the world, go out there and upseed the Boston pride who won the championship last year. But uh, that's one, one way that I'm going to try to watch a little bit more women's hockey. Then also, you know, it sucks that the men's, the NHL pulled out of the Olympics, but all that means is once again, just like in 2018, the women get the main stage and women's hockey at the Olympic level, especially USA versus Canada, if that so happens again. Phenomenal hockey. Phenomenal show. And with the NHL pulling out, like I mentioned, gives them a chance to steal the show just like they did in 2018, just like they've been doing ever since that moment, just making more heads turn in that direction. So my final New Year's resolution, the personal one, watch more women's hockey. That's a great one. And you're right. I did flip on me rarely using my ESPN Plus not that long ago did see that there was, I think it was the Boston Buttes and the Toronto Six in a game. Watched Boston a couple Pride. minutes of that. Pride, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, it's the Buffalo Buttes, right. Mm -hmm. Got to catch up, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're on ESPN+. Plus. Ease of access is right there. Uh, and, boy, the Olympics are always exciting for women's hockey. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who I don't know anyone who's going to be on the team yet because I just don't know if they've made that announcement. I don't know when that would come around soon, though. It's almost January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tournament starts in February, so hopefully soon we get some rosters. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Love, love to see who can who's still on that team because we talk about um, certain NHL players that have made however many Olympics now. Uh, these women hockey players are getting older too. Like mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of some names, like Hillary Knight's getting up there. She's been at a couple. Um, Kendall Coyne Schofield, I think, has been in a couple. She has. Forget how, forget how old all these players are now, but it'll be interesting to see if maybe there's a new guard coming in or if it's still uh, a lot of the same old faces, which is, oh, either way, is perfectly okay. Uh, just curious to see what they come up with. Mm -hmm. I Looking was trying to pull up their, their previous stuff, but I, I couldn't really find it. 
they do have a current roster on Wikipedia, but I don't know how much I, I trust that. But obviously, like yeah. names like Brianna Decker, you would imagine. Hillary Knight is probably going to be back. Kendall okay. Coyne Schofield is on this list. Amanda Kessel's on this list. So you you don't know for sure, but you, you imagine names like that are going to be right back on the team again. Yeah, just curious to see how it all goes. A lot of new, uh, a lot of new names and faces are coming up through those ranks, though. They are. They are. So we're going to take a quick break, though. When we return... Shout outs and call outs, everybody. We're going to finish it off on this Thursday and finish off 2021 for the tip of the iceberg. How else would we finish it? Shout outs and call outs right after the break. <laughs> 